So we're looking at now the back view. We're going to do a back and then a side view. Um, I think it's going to be more instructive to do that, uh, the back view first, and we can put the back and the side on together. So what I've got now is another pelvis, but from the back view, okay? Back view here, and then I've got the femur coming in. Notice the femur angle, the back of the femur. Uh, at an angle here, let me put the center line in here. So we have it nice and clear as to how it's coming into the form. Right in through here, here's the center line. Right in through there, okay? That's important to see. That's important to know through here. Now what we've done is we flipped, we have flipped the pelvis over from this direction, okay? And now we flipped it over this way. So this becomes the this right leg over here flipped over and now we're on this other side. So let's keep that, keep that in mind. So we've got all our positioning in order. We've got now the pelvis and one thing I want to show you in the pelvis that's important is right in through here this ischial tuberosity on the ischium. Right in this area, these little blunt areas are going to become very important for back leg anatomy, the um, flexors that we're going to be working on here and here they're going to be attaching to this kind of blunted area that I have sort of marked into here. They're kind of blunted and they're sort of round. That's going to be important for our connection, for, um, for our muscle muscle group. So why don't we start there. So the first muscle I'll, I'll uh, demonstrate and work with is the biceps femoris. Now it's kind of like the bicep on the model of the arm, the biceps brachii, in that it is a strong flexing kind of muscle. So the muscle will be sitting now on the ischial tuberosity back here, right here, okay, right in here, and be connecting over this bulbous head and be connecting back over into the fibia on the outside edge. Okay, so that's going to be interesting to see. So let's draw that muscle now. Now it bisects the leg bone by itself, so it comes in kind of in this direction. And I think it's also instructive now to get our leg kind of this outside positioning that we had before. So there's a downward aspect to the entire leg this way, okay, like so, and the leg wants to move the outside edge like, like this way, okay, and then it's going to come across wider, bulge out, head out a little bit here, come over and through here a little bit, right, and back up. So there's a feeling that this leg muscle, all of it together with everything is in this direction here, and then we get over to the knee like so. So it gets bulkier and wider back and through here. I'm going to turn my, my trusty uh, Ecarge, I've got it right out of the camera, so I use that too as well. I've got my bones and my Ecarge to help uh, with the diagrams too as well. And so what the way I learn is I do the diagrams and then when I teach them, I do the diagrams and I have my forms out to help me teach uh, as well. So that's that in a nutshell. So this is very much then a tube working around like so. Right, coming over just like we did here, really munching, really, really working over. Same thing uh, now over and through here. We have a tube working across this form. So here's our tube here, right? Just like volumetric figure, right? We have that here, right? We have that in through there. So we have our feeling of our entire system. I think that's important to see that as we're working through. Now, biceps femoris. It's going to be attaching to this ischial tuberosity. Okay, <clears throat> up high and outward to a little bit more of the lateral side of the tendinous in through here. And it's going to come down and it's going to be a little gap in through here. This is going to be filled up with muscle on the other side. Okay, then it starts to get into a bulkier kind of head. So let's just feel this muscle out a little bit. Let's feel how this is working for us. And through here, okay, like so, bulges. Okay, now we're going to come around. I'm just going to have you feel the other two muscles we'll put on in a moment. The semi membranous 
in semitendinous muscle, right in through here, they'll bulk out about right in through here and come back and, and attach a little bit lower and, and more medially in through here to the iliolar tuberosity up in this direction, kind of sheath, sheath over that form. All right, so let's break now down the biceps femoris and through here. So it's, it's tending and trending downward and over uh, laterally, okay? It's heading out through here so it gets a little bulkier in through here and then it starts to allow the femur to show through a little bit through here coming on downward and further then it's going to knuckle over a little bit come on over here okay allow that to come on over so this is the head over here coming through like so coming on down and through and then it's going to wrap around here okay it's going to wrap around <coughs> get my towel out of the way and it's going to wrap around and then it's going to coat right on top and attach right on top to the fibula. How about that? So right over all the way to there coating over that turn. Okay, so a lot like these muscles it has a bulk to it but it's kind of flat a little bit. So here's this rounded kind of Form, and then it starts to flatten a little bit as it's also rounded. And it can get to a bulky head too as well. So we kind of have that feeling, that nice feeling. Biceps femoris, really hard working hamstring muscle. When it's flexed, it bulges. Runners, this is a very bulgy muscle in the back for runners. We see that often through runners. Tendon up here to the ischial tuberosity, down and through, and over to the tibia, coating over here to to process uh, to material over here on this side. So we have a strong tendon coming over in through here and around. So I'll make this a little bit more fibery, like so. And let's do some little topographical lines too, as well, it's just to show that that form in through here. And it's it's a uh, kind of straight, curved over, straight, curve, and then downward a little bit. So it's not a real rounded kind of tube, is it? It's a little, it's a little flatter as it makes its turn over. We can underturn it just a little bit in through here, coming, coming across a little bit as well. Then we have the biceps femoris. Very strong feeling of, of the form back, back there. All right, so let's put on now the semi-membranous and semi-tendinous. Now, deeper, the deeper muscle, and I'm going to put this one on in the orange, the deeper muscle, the one further back, is the semi-membranous. And it will attach up and through here. It's actually a little larger, and it will bulk through. So we'll come out and head through here. I'm just going to coat it all in orange. So it's going to show through all the way. Then it's going to split up about right in through here, okay? And then it's going to come on down, coat underneath and over and attach to the, the uh, tibia down and through here. It's pretty powerful coming through. So we're going to see it like this around and coat across the condyle, the medial, medial section too, right? In the back part though, so what's back behind, now you still have the, remember you still have the sartorius, right? And you still have the gracilis as well. That's, a, that's important. So this is more in the back part of the tibia, down in through and around here. Okay, so I'm going to coat this in. This is the semi-membranous member, membranous, membranous, membrane. All right, so we have that. Okay, so now we're going to go for the, and I'll get a little bit of this outside for now. Okay, now we have the semi-tendinous, the semi-tendinous, okay, that's more, that's, it's important for us. So what's happening now with it, it's going to be closer to the, the biceps femoris as it attaches, but it's in front of, slightly, the semi-membranous. So what we have here, it's downward trending on top of, and then it starts to separate itself about right in through here from the semi-membranous, which is underneath, okay? And we have the biceps femoris under here, okay? Then there's that strong division because it's right on top and over, okay? So we get this, 
and we get this now coming through the outer edge. It coats on over, right? Then it wants to run in through, curl up, and run downward in through and coat now uh, the condyle and then to the tibia as well. So it's going to pop through here a little bit. So we see that popping through there and then get more tendinous, semi tendinous, more tendinous as it comes through a little earlier, right in through here, and then kind of coming on down in through there. So we see that uh, as well. Now, what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of fiber and shading on it so we can map out these two. Semi membranous in the back. And here, here we are now with the semi tendinous more on the surface. On the medial side over here, closer to the biceps femoris. Now, this is an important area right in through here. We're going to see the split right in through here quite nicely. So this is coating around here and then coming over and then back down through and on out this way. Up, around, and over, and through. Separation here from the biceps femoris to the semi-tendinous, right, to the semi-membranous, and then on out, and then over, and then back. Right in through here, this. I'm going to put a little bit more tone in through here. This is important for later on when the gastrocnemius will come up and underneath. The way most people teach it, while well, I was starting art school, I've seen others do this, is that you have the biceps femoris here, the finger, the semi-tendinous membranes here, and then the gastrocnemius tendons will come up and lock in underneath. That's pretty powerful. So they come from below and come up through these fingers. So just keep that in your, in your memory a little bit later, and uh, we'll, we'll work on that at the appropriate appropriate time. Okay, here a little flatter, flatter across, down a little bit. So there's not that big, 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 big turn. In through here, a little bit more shadow in through here to show that off. So there we go. So now we have the three muscles of the flexors in back, okay, of your leg. Not too bad. Now this is correct where, remember this bone is an angle, okay? Because the abductors, remember, will be attaching all back through here. Here's the linea aspera back and through here, and it would keep on coming down. So just keep that in mind as you're drawing as well. So we're filling, kind of filling that in, that back muscle. Now, we've got some more material to fill back here, and that is the gluteus medius and the gluteus Maximus coming over. So I want to reclaim this leg a little bit here. This is a little bit to be pulled in further in through here so we get that shape coming in through here. This muscle, remember this, the tensor fascia lata. Remember that um, wonderful Starbucks muscle attaches right back in through here and up and over. Kind of comes back to us a little bit over the trochanter here, right? So we have that which gets us to the iliotibial tract, which we can really show off in our side view over here a little bit later. And then remember we have the vastus lateralis attaching a little bit more forward now, but to here, right? And then cascading down, remember that? Okay, so remember this line in through here and coming on over, right? Coming on over and through here, right? You remember that? Coming in through, okay, vastus lateralis coming on over, and then starting to emerge, and then it would head down to the tendon, cover the patella, right? So that would be on the outside over here. So we would see that. You might see, if you're lucky, if you're getting lucky, you might see the medialis, maybe, and not that low, maybe, maybe right in through here about right in through here okay so there's your medialis that might be popping through does that start to look familiar now like more like a leg right sometimes when you just have the muscle you know you forget we also forget about subcutaneous fat all over the figure that's important to denote at times too as well that that can happen too 
those of us that have uh, subcutaneous fat. Unfortunately, I'm one of those. We have a little, little bit. Maybe not too much, but enough. Enough that I want to deal with. All right, now you'll see that a little bit here, okay? And if you're really lucky, what else are we missing? Well, remember the gracilius and the sartorius. So the sartorius, right, would come down <clears throat> from up top here, underneath, okay, all the way over, and might start make appearance right in through here, sartorius. Remember that belt muscle? And attaching down in through here, right? Right on through here, and the gracilius as well. Might come right in through, might see a little bit of that right in through. Right in through there, attaching over and get a little bit, you might see a little abductor coming in through, that would be mostly the gracilis and maybe a little bit of the longest. So let's put, let's put that in a little bit in through there. So there we go, right in through there. And that's gonna give us a little bit more of that full leg. Now, iliotibial tract over here, that banding muscle, the very posterior part, sheathing over here, right? Sheathing over, hugging the uh, vastus lateralis coming down, would fill this in a little bit and then hug through posterior. Now with the orange line is, that's more in the middle of the, of the knee where we're at the back here. This is the biceps femoris tendon. That's important to know. We've got to get these straight. I'll have to do a knee study close up a little bit to get that really worked out for you. Right in through, right in through there. It's important, important to, we want to know, condyle in through here. These are meniscus pads. Those uh, fat pads, cartilage, articular cartilage up and through to help keep this all uh, working and not get too much, too much fr friction, right? All right, so we got a nice leg going, I think, in back. So I think we're there with what we want in the back, except for now the glutes. <clears throat> so we've got the glutes the gluteus maximus, and we've got the gluteus medialis. So the medialis I'll put underneath, and it attaches roughly now over here on, on the uh, iliac crest and through here, and this fossa, gluteal fossa, it's going to come over and attach just onto the trochander, right in through this, this here. It doesn't come all the way back, okay? So it's about right in through here. It's kind of a fan muscle. In through here, could bulge out a little bit like this. Okay, on over and onto now the trochanter area. In through here, kind of fan down that tendinous area. So I'm going to put it in right here because we're going to cover most of it on up with the gluteus maximus. In through, in through here. There we go. So we'll have that. I'll make a little bit more of a hard edge. We can still see it underneath that. All right, so now we've got to put the butt muscle on. All right, hooray for the butt, right? Okay. It's kind of the star of the show, mostly. So, gluteus medius, right in through, right in through there. All right, let's go for the maximus. Now the maximus, Gluteus maximus, the, the big old butt muscle, powerful thing, okay? It's going to be now attaching to this cresting part in this area of the pelvis, coming down and over roughly this part, attaching to upon neuroses of the sacrum in through here, sacral bone in through here, a little bit lower, down past the ischial curve or the, the tuberosity, in through back up and over, curving, sheathing over, attaching to the trochanter a little bit above, slightly before the big hump. This part gets exposed, by the way. Let me make that dart right in through here. This is gonna still be mostly exposed, the iliotibial tract and uh, fat will be over that. So that's gonna bump out. You can feel that kind of bump out, but, it'll, but most of that gets covered up again by the tract and also uh, fat if you have it. But on well-developed people, that's gonna, that's gonna show through a little bit. Okay, 
So <clears throat> then underneath as the glute comes up and over, it's going to track to attach to part of the uh, linea aspera for the, or the rough line for the glute. So let's just draw the glute. My goodness, so we're gonna be here with that glute coming up and over, cascading up and over, sheathing over, coming down at an angle, coming over a bit, actually here, coming up and then down and through, okay, coming over to that split, the gluteal split, right in there, also known as your butt crack, buttus cracus in um, Latin. That's a joke, by the way. Then we're gonna come down, and it's gonna get even lower. There's a little band in here that keeps it a little tighter, which is what we know is the shape, but it gets a little lower, but for all, all practical purposes, roughly right in through here. So it's gonna come across in here. This is gonna come down, like this butterfly winging through, and over, end over through here. This is gonna to continue to come over, attach the upon neuroses through here, and then this moves here, and we have another band that comes over and then attaches tightly underneath into this tuberosity and over. And so you get this kind of stretching and pulling of the material, okay, in through here, like so. And then this comes around. Now, underneath that is uh, the, uh, I believe the peroneus muscles. No, no, excuse me, piniformis. I never really think about them. I just I kind of have them to, memor, to memorize them there. But these kind of banded muscles underneath, but we don't really see them unless a well-developed glute is, is contracted. Okay, that's important. Um, but mostly it's the gluteus maximus uh, in through here. And then we can come up. Remember, let some of that trochanter, that chop peak show through like so. And bulge, bulge, beautiful bulgy butt form that uh, culturally well, all of humanity is, has worshipped over the centuries as humans, humanity. So all cultures have worshipped a good butt, I suppose. And I think I'll leave it, I'll leave it at that. So we have this coming down a little bit and then let's get a little bit of toning going through here. Okay. Through, so we'll cover this now. The medius will get covered. Okay. This is kind of indicating kind of a fibrous quality now to, to the drawing to get that to turn, to get that to turn over. I'm just gonna kind of blend and striate to get that feeling across. Make this look good a little bit for kind of a diagram, just to kind of feel these fibrous area issue. This is a big strong turn in here. They have see how that fibers also have a kind of a downward turn in this particular view. Put over and make sure you have over attaching underneath here. Now right under here, I'm gonna make that this darker. I'm gonna pull this with my finger down, and there's gonna be a cast shadow underneath where those bicep femoris and the flexors are, semi-tendinous and membranous. So there's a cast shadow underneath there. Kind of have this coming down, and this will be like this here. Okay, a little bit more of a band here. That's why we get kind of a two gluteal turn and this will be under here. A lot of times what you'll see in drawing, you'll see this curve for the glute go back this way, okay? And then you'll see an underturn here of this arrow indicating the um, flexors of going back the other way. It gives you a nice rhythm line to play off of in drawing. You see that all the time, and I learned that when I was in art school in LA to play off that. So we have that cast shadow look going. <clears throat> like this and we'll come over. This kind of gets ridged. And through ridged over, ridged over. 
I just want to take some time and render out a little bit. We're gonna, I'm going to do one or two in this series of kind of Russian anatomy drawing from their academy kind of type, type studies to, to show you guys, my students and you guys in YouTube land, what that looks like too, it feels like. I've had some requests by my, my students here at the university to do that. I'll do that. Right in through there. So we get that nice patterning. And I'm going to feel this trochanter now. See that trochanter wants to pop through there? So we feel that indicating underneath now. And remember, this is the lateralis. Right in through here. And the iliotibial tract coming through there. And it's important to see. Kind of see that area as it starts to make its make its way known into our drawing practice. Okay. <clears throat> so I think we're about ready now to head on to the last frontier which is the side view. And we'll make some studies of that side view, we can see both the flexors and the side feeling of the quads and a little bit of the glutes all work together to make, make it come together from the side. Then we'll get a better view of the iliotibial tract as well and also the, the uh, tensor, tensor fascia lata. Okay, so why don't we do ourselves a favor and go on to that. Side view. Okay, let's work on these muscle forms and get these forms uh, finalized out. So what's challenging about the side view is to just get it looking right, get it, get the proportions right. So I've got the, the pelvis laid out and I've got the femur and the tibia and the fibia. Notice again where the fibia is located in all of these. Now in the side view, it's pushed behind a little bit. Take a look at this bone and see how far back it is viewed back here from the, the tibia, the fibia, the fibia. See how far back that is. It's pretty far back from the front, okay? And in the back, it's, it's sitting back there pretty nicely. So I want to keep that in great mind as we're drawing too. That's going to help with your, with your, your location uh, quite a bit. Okay, all right, so let's start to put on these muscle forms and get a feel for that. So a couple things we can do. We can start with uh, one dominant muscle. Well, I guess you know what, before we do that, let's get the look of the, the total leg here. Get my bones out of the way of what that will look like. So uh, the whole leg will, and even the, even let's take into effect the glute as it comes through. This is going to look like, we're going to kind of get a feeling of the outline of all of this. This is going to feel, so we can kind of say, well, sometimes you put on the muscle forms, and I did this, I'll put them on without getting the true form, and they look a little wonky. And that's because, well, okay, I needed to get the, the, the true form that made more sense. So tensor fascia lata sartorius, and to here, remember that. So it's going to be have this downward trend. Remember that again? So it's going to have this angled look here, across, okay, like that, the glute will come up here very lightly, I'll feel that in, so we're going to put material, right, coming down the lateralis and probably the medialis, maybe a little bit back in through here, it'll look like this, right, coming through, okay, so we'll have this feeling, this will be straighter in theory, I'm going to talk about that later on, from this region, I'm going to make a dark line out of it, already from here, roughly actually to here, sartorius would be there, about here, we're going to talk about that being more of a straight part of the leg, and I'll tell you why, so we can actually lift it later. So we get this look and feeling here, and it's going to feel now downward, trending it around, so this is going to come around like that too, remember, okay, and then back this way at an angle, and of course that biceps Femoris now hanging off that uh, ischium tuberosity here will come out bulge and give us this. We could even bulge it more to give it a muscular look. That's going to give us this kind of feeling too of coming right around here where the bulgiest part is, where the axis 
of that gets real thick, and of course this will come back on. And this head might be a little, a little big for my taste. Let's. There we go. That's a little, little bit better. Right in through, right in through there. Let's reduce this divia down just a little bit. There we go. So we can see that a uh, little bit much coming back on in and over and attaching. So that's what we're, we're shooting for, you'll see now, with the form look of that leg. So let's start out. Let's attach the vastus uh, lateralis here to the tu tuberosity of the, 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 the trochanter right in through here on the side, and it's going to come out. This can vary quite a bit. It's going to get pretty bulgy as it comes across the side here, okay, and downward. Right, and through here, like so. It's going to come out and start to expose itself. That sounded weird. It's start to come out and just look out. It's going to start to illustrate itself and through here and then downward. Okay, and then remember that tendon as the muscles start to finish, right? and emerge and come on through attaching through here but also down and over now to that patella ligament right which is here over the patella sheathing over it with the intermedius which is underneath we won't draw that this time and the medialis which is on the other side, medial we're on the lateral side that'll sheath over coat that over right come on down to here so I come on down and wrap me up. So the patella is floating, right? And it'll get sheathed over, and that'll be a little bit more of a kind of wider, whiter, tendinous kind of uh, material. In through, in through here. So that's the vastus lateralis. So we're here, right? Okay. We're here, and now we're here in our side view. Of the muscle form, pretty pretty long, strong muscle. These lower body muscles, the glutes, the lateralis. Wow, they're pretty powerful, aren't they? All right, so I'll give us a kind of a curvature, fibered look to it. And it's a little flatter. Let's see here. I want to make this line later. This interesting line here. I'll talk about that in a little bit of why that is. So this can flatten out a little bit. That look of it. Right through here, that can flatten out a little bit, that look of it. Right through here. Move on through. So we have that. Okay. So that's the vastus lateralis that's known about that. Okay, so we have that. Now let's catch the Tensor fascia lata, that Starbucks muscle. Okay, I'll have a tensor fascia lata with a side of vanilla and pelvis. Probably not. So the tensor fascia lata is hanging out and attaching on this part of the spine uh, of the iliac crest, right in through here, the superior part. This is the uh, inferior part. Lower. Remember, this is where the rectus femoris attached. This is where the Tensor fascia lata on the lateral side and on the more the medial side is the up uh, is the sartorius. Okay, so let's draw the tensor, the TFL, over and down and through attaching here roughly and over. Nice little bulgy kind of rectangular form in through here. Right, gets flexed over and attaches onto that trochander, hooks onto that tendinously. Right, right in through here, okay. On the top, because this part will bulge out more in through here and be less less material. So we have the tensor fascia lata in through here, the Starbucks muscle, right in through here. Okay. Look at the first person to ever say it's Starbucks muscle. Probably not. It's hard to be original. We we'll pass down this knowledge, this anatomy knowledge, from my professors, etc., where they got it. So that's all good stuff. I don't think they've ever said the Starbucks muscle. How could they? Some of them, anyway. Okay, so we have that. 
Now we're going to go for the rectus femoris up and through here. So remember to attach this right up and through here, okay? Coming down, okay? Straightens out a little bit. Coming down like so and through, okay? <clears throat> we get a little bit of the medialis that didn't get covered up right up and through the rectus, uh, excuse me, attaching on the trochanter here on this side, so this would come through. So that's the medialis, okay? And here is the rectus femoris. Right, coming down and through this way, straight. Okay, remember it's attaching to that inferior head or, or part of the scapula. Excuse me, the pelvis. I always get those, say those incorrectly, and I should never get those confused since they're not even close. Get that look to it, the tensor. Mashalata. Then coming down the rectus femoris and through here. More on the inside track in through here. Ending earlier, right? Ending up here early. Remember, it's got the intermediates underneath it, so it bulges out. Ending about right in through here and up and through. We'll just let it rest like it's supposed to here. Right in through here. Okay. Can I give it a look of turning? Like so. So that's the rectus. Rectus femoris. We don't get many of the abductor looking through here. What we would get is the sartorius coming through. So the sartorius would be here now. Okay, coming on down. It'd probably disappear here. Okay, disappear here. You got might get a little of the abductor coming in and through here ever, but sartorius disappearing. And then the medialis may be bulgy a little bit. And through here. Remember, they're all going to come down here and sheath over the patella, right? You might get a little bit over and through. And through there. I'll keep it just like just like that. And right on through here. So we've got that nice kind of bulging look. And this rectus femoris and through here will come really and bulge. We'll see this really bulge through here, this head. And through here, like so. Okay. Right, medialis may be showing a little bit through here to that rough part, but the rectus will more probably a little, a little bit wider. So, around, over, around and through, around, around, coming on down, looking like so. And I could do the fibers the other way if I wanted it to here. Okay, all right, so we have that patella and through here, right, looking, looking pretty. Pretty good there with the shape of it. We wanted that shape to work out pretty well. It's going to be a lean looking, you know, muscular leg because we're not talking about much subcutaneous fat, especially even with the glute. So let's get the biceps femoris in the back. So remember, we're on the lateral side. We're on this side. So we're taking a look at this muscle here, okay? And it's going to be right over here. So remember, it connects to this ischium here, right? Okay, so it's right here. That tuberosity of that issue, and through here, tenderness in there, coming down straight, and then it wants to come on out in the side view, bulge out earlier here, just like that. So this is going to be wider here. So we have this downward view here. This could even be trending out even a little bit more that way. So we're going to get that wider view here, coming on down, coming on down, and through here, hanging out lower. Now this is where this gets interesting. Now we're going to get to see this very... I want to bring the head up of the biceps femoris um, here just a little bit longer and bring it up, curve it back up underneath first before I put the tendon on. We'll talk about that. So this is going to come out like that. So this is really going to bulge. Very strong muscle in the back. Like so, curving one out. Okay, so we have that. Like so. Okay. <clears throat> Can you see it coming together now? So we have this. If not, that's okay. It took me a while too as a student. It's okay to get all this together. Attaching right there to the tendon. The semi-membranous and semi tendinous will be behind there. We wouldn't see them in this view. So now we're going to get this tendon down here. It's a real strong one. Kind of straight. Comes on down. Okay, that's where that 
tibia, tibia needs to be in a little. I'm gonna move that. Sorry about that. I'm gonna move that in a little bit, actually further. Make sure we get this right. Dude, there, I'm gonna erase part of that. Just get it right. It's okay. It's okay if you have to move things. Don't worry about it. Get it right. Move it around. It's okay in art. Just can move stuff around. So what's happening is we get this tendon coming down. It's a pretty strong tendon. It has a tendency to be straight for a long time. It attaches right in through here on the fibia. In this area. A little strong attachment right on there. Make it a little bit lighter. And so there's that biceps femoris. So now we're starting to get a real strong look of what happens now with the leg quite a bit. So we get the end of that um, condyle in through here just a little bit of the femur, right through your meniscus in through here. Okay, those little, those little pads to help with uh, friction of the knee. So we're looking pretty good now. Um, let's put on the glute and then we've got the iliotibial tract to put on. So let's put on the gluteus minimus, excuse me, um, gluteus medius in maximus. I'm going to put the medius here in orange. It's going to attach here and out, fanward here, like so, to the side like this, and come on down. And attach, remember, on the trochanter underneath here. We're going to feel that across in that fossa area. Okay, remember the oblique is on top of, the, of, of this area coming up, right? Remember that from our earlier lessons. So we have now the gluteus medius muscle in through here. And push that back. Okay. Attach it right in through there. So we have the tensor. Tensor fascia lata in through here. Over right through here. That stabilizing muscle. Sartorius over here. Now, <clears throat> as promised over here, I will talk about the this little area of interest between here and uh, here. This little area, if you put your thumb and your 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 thumb right on this little ischial crest right here, the superior part, this tends to be a straight line on the leg. And the reason why is when you bend your leg up, it it will give you enough material to move. So you can it's about three fingers now it's not to scale, but it's about three fingers in, I'm just going to put 3F here. It's about three fingers, we call it the gap, three-fingered gap. And it allows the rectus femoris to contract and bring up your leg. Isn't that nice? It's a nice little design. That a wonderful little thing that your body can do. Pretty cool. Body's pretty amazing. So that's, that's what that's doing. It's called the three-fingered gap. I learned that at Art Center as well. It's pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. Now let's go for the gluteus maximus. So the gluteus maximus sits in this fossa over the top here. Comes down, I need to do that in violet color. In through here roughly, coming over, coming over, following that curve down now. And through and over. So we get that form, so all this the sheathing over, it doesn't go past the trochanter now. It doesn't cover it all the way because we see the trochanter bulge, right? The greater trochanter bulge. It's coming through and this is coming over like so. It gives us that gluteal part. Now, this can vary widely because we know that there's subcutaneous fat, right, of, of uh, our body and our form meaning that we can have certainly um, more, more subcutaneous fat. And the, the, the form of the, of the leg, excuse me, the buttock can be wider or thicker. Or they can be very tight and striated too as well. All right, so we have that coming down through glutes. Oh, remember, attaching here, attaching to the trochanter there. I 
broke my pencil and I don't have another violet color, so I gotta, I've got to sharpen and talk at the same time. So that's okay. So a lot to talk about here. The, the glue, again, will have quite a bit of fat pockets. But we want to make sure that we don't cover up all that trochanter. So I'll talk a little bit while you're catching up. I mean, catching up on the internet, so all I gotta do is push stop, right? But you get that trochanter head bulging out. Take a look at the, mid, the middle drawing with the back. You can see the trochanter pop out. That is important to know that that form has got to be, even though it's covered by the iliotibial tract, it's still pretty a, a bony landmark. It's people, when they talk about the hips, they say the hip bone, and that, that's kind of what they really mean. Even though the whole thing of the ilium and the ischium, that whole connection is really more of the, more of the hip bone. All right, so I'm ready to move over here now. Come back over to the glutes attaching here. Coming back on over, okay, and then it's going to come and attach to the linea aspera here, the rough line through here, and then sheath over, right? Get a little bit banded, and by ponderosus and by the iliotibial tract, it will also be connected to, so all this will cover up, be covered up in this, in this particular view. Now one, one last thing I want to add to, I want to finish up the glute. I'm going to put a little bit of the semi-tendinous back here. This needs to be a little, a little fuller. So that, that muscle would show through actually just, just a little bit. So I'm going to put that back there. That gives me a better, a better richer uh, hamstring view right in through there. Okay. So let's put this glute on here, coming over and wrapping over and through. Okay. Whoops, and I broke it again. Let's see if I can just take it, take it off and use it as a big little piece here. So I don't have to burn camera time. Yes, okay. There we go. I like the pencils instead of the big chalk sticks. They don't tend to break as much. Or they don't, they don't tend to break as much, but they're so bulky. They annoy me a little, but that's just me. There we go. So I made that work, a little impromptu camera work. You always have the edit tool, so that always works too as well. So there's the glute as well. Right in through there. Let's take the black now. We'll come underneath here as well. So this really wants to come over in through, okay. And you're going to feel this bulk of the, the, the bulge of the tensor come over a little bit, right in through here. Come on, and over a little bit. And then back in, and kind of up, and over, and through, up, and over, back in through to the pubic, pubic region in through here. And this is going to feel like a little bit of a gap here and here. Right in through. Well-developed men that can be kind of models can have that little, that little gap of their abs that women find irresistible, I guess. I don't tend to have that. Oh, well. No big deal. Here. There we go. That's coming over. Gluteus maximus here. And we've got, I think we've got just about everything we need now. I'll put a little cast shadow. And see there, and then we've got the iliotibial tract we'll took out here. So I'm going to erase out a little bit. The iliotibial tract, it is a middle band that runs kind of middle laterally on your vastus lateralis, comes up, comes over the trochanter and onto the tensor fascia lata, and then tends to be coated and disappear with tendinous material into the glute right in this particular area kind of comes out a little bit so let's let's work on that and get that iliotibial tract or i've heard people call it like a band uh, as well so let's put that in so what what's happening is it's coating over the trochanter here and essentially just kind of making its way out and ending 
out here through tendinous connection in this region. Interesting that way. So this is the iliotibial tract, like so. Encoding through, and then it, as it comes over the trochanter, it's pretty thin, so it doesn't make the trochanter fatty or, or distorted in any, in any major sense of that bone protrusion. But what happens is you get this fibrous material, and then as you flex your, your leg when you do squats or you're straining in a way that will make that show up, this area right in through here is called the iliotibial tract, and it's very kind of banded little little band is and it comes down it makes a tendon. People get this confused with the biceps femoris uh, tendon. That's not to be confused. There's there's a tendon right here. I'm going to draw it. And that's the iliotibial tract ligament or excuse me tendon tendon. And it attaches right on through here onto the tibia right in through there. So this would get a little bit blurred out and through here, the meniscus in through here, right? And so you get this little hollowing here. We're going to see that in other studies later. In through here, get that hollowing out underneath, and you get this. This will come over, and you could actually put your hand through it a little bit underneath it as it works its way. Pretty fibrous, pretty tough tissue, but loose, but loose in through here. Okay? Then over here, we, we come back and we get these, remember the tendons over here of the vastus lateralis. Over through here, so you have this feeling also right in through there. And so that's pretty important here. So you get this line, you get this line coming over, and you get this line of the biceps from Morris right in through there. Look at all that coming through in that knee. That's a lot. So that's going to be important to hang on and learn those. You get the tendon of the patellar tendon, the iliotibial tract, and then you get the biceps for Morriston. Take heart, you can remember this stuff, but you just gotta, you gotta keep in mind of where it's located. So the biceps for Morris is in the, in the back. The iliotibial tract here is in the medial middle area on the side here. And then the tendon in the front here to draw is in the front to slightly on the, on the side. Yeah, the post, uh, patella here on the side. So this wants to come down, right? And this gets bulgy. Okay, medial. Dude, this comes around and over, and then you get this three, right? So you got one, right? Two, and you get you get three that you're working with. All right. So I think that concludes the front, the side. Uh, in the back now of the leg muscle. So what I want to do with you uh, in our series here is to um, do some more diagrams, but more active. It, it's not the living, the living model, living anatomy that I talk about. It's somewhere in between that, meaning that it is the. It's still diagrammatic, but it's got a little. So we're drawing the muscles only, but it's it's got a little bit of movement to it. So we get to see these moving. I think only doing these uh, very flat views, or not flat, but just very stiff diagrammatic. Um, we need we need more too, don't we? All right. So let's let's go on to that. That'll be next.